in uh, during the during the uh, discussion if you guys have a question and answer we can uh, we can ask that at the bottom and uh, we should be good to go um, the format today is going to be a bit of a mix we're going to have a a uh, presentation that I'm going to go through all the different bits and pieces that I would suggest you guys be thinking about during the new normal. Um, given all of the experience that HubSpot has um, across about 85,000 companies that we help with their sales and marketing, um, we're going to give you an idea of some of the tools that we use uh, for our customers. Um, as well as at the end, we're going to have a very, very short demonstration. The demonstration is really just to give you guys a view into, um, into the interface of HubSpot and just give you a feel a feel for it. And then we've got a, a kind of a special offer at the end, um, and then I'll send out this video f uh, to you guys afterwards, okay? So without further ado, let's uh, grab the screen and get going. Okay, so to give you guys a, a quick overview of who I am, my name is Luke. I work out of the Dublin office here um, at HubSpot. Um, Dublin is our EMEA headquarters. Um, it's my job to make sure that our customers are being served uh, well through our partner network. Um, we've got uh, Brahms Technologies uh, in Dubai who are our partner out there. They really are our kind of eyes and ears on the ground uh, in the region um, and we lean on them heavily to make sure that we have a, uh, a really good relationship locally uh, with customers and they have someone to go to where that can, they can actually uh, visit them in their office and stuff like that. So the title of the webinar today is Managing the New Normal with HubSpot Sales and Marketing. Um, this is, I know we all kind of went through this big change in, in March where it, the, it really, we didn't know what was going to be happening. Everything was shutting down. I know in my own co home country of Ireland, um, you know, everything was completely shut down. Uh, businesses couldn't uh, interact with their customers as well as they, they wanted to. Um, we noticed our, ourselves with our, our sales approach. HubSpot actually works quite well uh, in this new normal because people aren't, um, like we have a an inbound sales team where we're, uh, everyone's sitting in an office calling out to customers and stuff like that. Um, On-site visits is not something that HubSpot does very often. Um, we do it to our partners, but we don't do it ourselves very often. Um, so we were using our tools to, to manage the sales uh, process ourselves. So I know those companies uh, back in March until now, the last six months, and um, they will be um, really struggling with those those out calls or going to people's offices. You know, a lot of people don't want uh, salespeople coming to their office, you know, maybe interacting with them and stuff like that. So let's talk about uh, how HubSpot can help you manage that, um, as well as managing uh, teams that are going to be distributed all over the world. Okay. So to give you a, a quick introduction, that's me, uh, Luke, over here. Um, I used to, I've been in HubSpot for about three years, or well, three and a half years, and I used to run the, um, the Nordic uh, sales team before I uh, got this job. Um, Sandeep is the, the regional manager for Brahms. He's our, our kind of technical guy on the ground in Dubai that helps uh, actually deploy HubSpot for customers there. And Amaima um, is the, the marketing executive who set all this up. So thanks very much for that, Amaima. Um, I'd like to just, go to a, a slide here about Brahms and maybe bring in Sandeep just to give us a, you know, a 90 second or two minute uh, uh, introduction to what Brahms do with HubSpot in the region. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So hi guys, my name is Sandeep Mahindra. As Luke just introduced, I'm a regional manager for the Brahms Technologies and we are focusing on this custom experience side and I'm getting help up for my mind as well. So if you look at, we are doing a lot of activities around uh, marketing consulting, automation, sales automation. It comes with a combination of marketing automation, sales automation, and service automation. At the same time, you have, would have a lot of enterprise application where the integration is a, is a key area where you need to inform or take the actionable item with the enterprise application like SAP, Dynamics, uh, some other applications. Uh, sometimes that people are talking about a different application they are using custom applications so those load of api integration so we are utilizing uh pricing uh where we have a lot of connectors readily available for the customers so we are coming from uh, the the technical background and we are uh, bringing value on the technical integration with the hubspot apart from the standard the standard functionality is quite simple on hubspot and there are a lot of literatures and informations are available so we come to the picture where we make all these two worlds 
comes together and give a good customer experience at an uh, end of the day for your customers. So this is a nutshell from my side. Thank you, Luke. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so like, like uh, Sandeep was saying there, uh, HubSpot really needs uh, partners to to make sure that the customers are getting the most out of the product. And that's why we've partnered with, uh, with Sandeep and the guys over at Brahms uh, to make sure that we can achieve that. Um, so as an agenda, we're going to talk about how to produce inbound leads since uh, it's going to be more difficult to do stuff like cold calling and stuff like that because if you call an office and nobody is uh, sitting in the office, it's hard to get a hold of them. Um, we're going to talk about managing remote teams with HubSpot, um, how to automate uh, the processes between prospects and opportunities, um, and also manage pipelines in a virtual environment. So if you're managing a sales team, you're going to get a little bit of information about how we approach that within HubSpot. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, how to target customers more effectively through account-based marketing. So account-based marketing is a, a kind of more of a philosophy than a, a feature. Uh, it's going to be uh, something that where sales and marketing work hand in hand to make sure that they have a joint approach when they're going after those big ticket items or those big ticket companies that they're trying to close. So we'll talk a little bit about that and how HubSpot approaches that as well. So I put this in here just to kind of illustrate the, the global nature of what's happening in the era of, uh, of COVID-19. Um, this is a live map of the, the pandemic that's happening. So the illustration here is really just to show that this is something that's affecting everybody all over the world. Um, and with the, with the amount of uh, investment that's happening with uh, vaccines and stuff like that, everything is still uh, very much up in the air. Um, this is not loading. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, so very, everything is, is very much uh, up in the air uh, when it comes to what next year will look like, the year after. Will this be something that we'll have to live with uh, in the long term? So with HubSpot, we take the approach that we are trying to be, uh, be ready for the worst, but hope for the best. Um, so we have a robust system in, in place where every salesperson will be allowed or will be able to work effectively from wherever they are, whether that's home, whether that's in a shared work environment, um, and also that we have a really effective uh, marketing strategy in place to make sure that we can reach people wherever they are. So that's what we're going to have a chat about today. Um, I wanted to go through a few things here as in what has changed for sure. People are going to be working from home or working from uh, distributed uh, places. If we have a look at what people are worried about, they're worried about the future. Um, this is an opportunity for us to provide content perhaps about um, about how we can, our individual companies can help them, our prospects not worry about a certain aspect or whatever. So we'll talk about content creation. Um, people are leaning on content uh, that they can trust to make their, to inform their decisions. So it's gonna be more difficult now that more people are on the, on the internet constantly. They'll be able to um, research products, services, they'll be, be doing a lot more uh, looking at reviews of your products and everything like that. So you may, we have to make sure that we're owning the conversation uh, online and HubSpot allows you to do that. Industries are getting more concentrated uh, with a winner take all. If we have a look at uh, Amazon, um, billions of packages, Google's billions of searches, Facebook, uh, billions of visits. Um, there's a lot of these companies that are taking up a lot of the attention. Um, in order for us to thrive from a marketing and sales point of view, we have to make sure that we are, 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 are driving a certain amount of engagement with our content so that we stand out uh, in the crowd. So how are we going to survive and thrive? Uh, we're going to adapt an inbound marketing uh, strategy. We're going to convert uh, our sales uh, teams into inbound selling. Inbound selling, uh, it really is a, uh, a a philosophical concept where the salespeople are taking leads that are, are further up in the in the traditional sales funnel and trying to help them first and sell later. So we've really been implementing this at HubSpot for a long time. A lot of our leads that would come into HubSpot would be companies who are or prospects who have downloaded an ebook, for example. Our salespeople will follow up with them, see if they need any more help, and try to drive opportunities uh, through that. Um, Inbound marketing is really focusing on the long game. Um, it's difficult for companies that are under pressure to hit sales this month, this quarter, uh, but marketing uh, really should be something uh, that is a, a long-term play. Inbound marketing is really good for that. Inbound uh, marketing is what HubSpot really allows you to do through its nurturing, through its content creation and content tools. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. 
um, we're also uh, going to need to measure the outcomes of marketing um, and, and sales using uh, account-based marketing. Okay, so I was trying to think about the inbound sales process um, in the kind of post-COVID world. That's what I was coming up with. We really do have to take that long-term view here. A lot of the companies that I've been speaking to in the last few years, or sorry, last few, last few years, uh, last few months, um, a lot of those people are in a kind of a, a holding pattern where they really need to know um, what's going to be coming around the corner uh, before they can make a decision. So in this case, we need to make sure that our, our marketing is focused on uh, driving engagement with our brand through content um, and intelligent account targeting. So we want to make sure that we're really targeting our our content at those companies who are able to buy our services and also the ones that would be the most profitable for us to, to actually sell to. So we wanna focus on that. And um, we need to have a really robust system for marketing um, nurturing leads um, so that when they're ready to talk to sales, uh, we're the first people uh, in their inbox that they can, they can remember uh, educating them. Um, so we need to do this in an automated way uh, through email workflows that are smart, that react to the behavior of our, uh, of our prospects. Um, we need to have an automated uh, process for the handover between marketing and sales teams. There's lots of different ways we can do this. One, we can literally uh, send leads within HubSpot from the marketing team to the sales team uh, whenever they convert on the website, for example or we can have a, kind of a, a measurable uh, qualification through lead scoring, which we can also do that with HubSpot, where if a lead hits a certain score, then it gets rotated to a salesperson. That salesperson needs to follow up with them within a, a certain uh, service level agreement. It might be five minutes, it might be in an hour. Uh, the sales approach to qualified leads it must have a help first mentality. In the post COVID world, with all the, uh, the uncertainty that's going on, a lot of the time people that are reaching out to learn about new products or services, they're, they're further up in the funnel than they would be if they were confident about the future. If they're confident about the future, they're ready to, to buy now, this month. Um, but now we're trying to just make sure that they, are com they have complete peace of mind when they're buying our, our uh, services and products and our sales approach has to reflect that. So just a little bit about the HubSpot journey and why we are, we're so, um, so passionate about inbound uh, marketing and also inbound selling. Um, HubSpot's journey, we started off as a marketing tool um, in about 2007. In 2014, we launched our CRM and this is really where our future is. The CRM is the base of everything uh, that we do in HubSpot. It's, the, it's where the, all of the data is stored about customers. We think that every time that you interact with a customer, it should be through HubSpot so we can capture that information so that we can, so that we can segment based on that information and then provide our, our potential customers with the best in class marketing and sales uh, experience. Um, so we've built the, the CRM project up to 200 million. Uh, HubSpot does about 800 million uh, a year in revenue. Um, and the tools that allowed HubSpot to do this uh, are even more effective in the, coast, or the post uh, COVID-19 uh, world uh, because we've been doing this inbound selling and inbound um, sales for a long time. So I'm going to jump into some of the, the features that we would lean on in the HubSpot process um, to ad adapt to the new, uh, the new normal. So the first thing at the very top of our funnel here is going to be the lead generation. So the way we think about the lead generation is the lead qualification metrics. All salespeople want to talk to is the hand raiser, good fit quadrant or sextant in this case. Um, they're, the, they're, they're the, the leads that come to the website and they say, I want to set up a demo. I want to talk to sales. Those types of calls to action are great, but over the last say 10 years, um, the, the kind of qualified leads that come in that are a good fit and have asked for uh, help from a salesperson have declined uh, because people have a lot of information at their, at their fingertips that they can do a lot of the research themselves. Um, before people were really researching um, services and products on the internet before uh, talking to salespeople, the salespeople had an advantage because they had an informational advantage over the, the customer um, and they could use that to kind of drive these leads. So when we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about 
marketing and inbound marketing, we really want to be uh, focused on the, the good, good fit hand raises for sure, but also the good fit not unready and uh, good fit sales ready. Sales ready would mean that they have, a, they have identified the problem that they're trying to solve, but um, they haven't actually uh, reached out to us and said, we want to enter a sales process. Um, so when we're driving uh, traffic to our website, we're trying to get good fit for sure. That's what our focus should be. Um, but it shouldn't just be on people who are hand raisers. We want to cast a wide net, get the contact information for all of the people who are good fit uh, that are either sales ready or unready as well. The poor fit, uh, the poor fit leads that come to our website, these are going to be um, self um, self qualified out as well. Um, what we'll do is we'll set up forms where we where, where HubSpot will recognize their answers. If their answers don't fit a certain uh, profile that we're trying to sell to, um, we can just not uh, nurture them going forward, or we can just skip um, them coming to, uh, going to the sales process altogether. The first step in any process of getting your inbound marketing up and running is the SEO uh, uh, topic. So especially in the, the post-COVID world, we need to be driving uh, traffic to our website as much as we can. Uh, SEO is a great way to do it in a, in a very cost-effective way. Um, the, the cost of advertising um, on, on social and everything like that is uh, going in a, a very uh, uptrend right now uh, with everybody kind of locked inside. Um, so with HubSpot, you'll be able to do uh, SEO work on your website that you used to have to pay people for. Um, so the recommendations here, um, there's there's two kind of aspects of this. One uh, is the topic. So HubSpot will uh, give you some suggestions of where you should be uh, producing content. And the recommendations uh, really is how to maximize your website. Um, and if there's any pages on your website that are not um, maximized for SEO, HubSpot will uh, let you know that and also give you an impact score and um, the reason why you should update that. So all those, basically it gives you the tool that you used to have to pay a, a marketing agency to do for you. So that's where I would start. When it comes to content, we've got uh, tools for, for blogging to make sure that they're gonna be completely optimized for SEO as well. Um, content, right now, I would suggest that we should be thinking about uh, producing uh, video content as well. Uh, with the blogging tool with HubSpot, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to embed video that you'd be explaining about a problem that your uh, prospects might have that you're going to be uh, solving for them. Or, you know, there might be a, a thought leadership piece that you guys are doing that you want to promote on LinkedIn, that you want to promote on uh, Facebook ads or whatever. And we want to make sure that it's a, as engaging as possible. With HubSpot Marketing, you'll be able to upload your uh, your marketing videos directly to HubSpot and track the engagements uh, and get some analytics based on that as well. So when we say blogging tool, it really is um, blogs and content that is written is kind of the entry level stuff. We've got you covered there, but we need to think a little bit bigger as well. When it comes to social tools, we want to make sure that we are we are reaching people where they are. If people are not in the office, if they're spending a lot of time on social, we want to make sure that we are engaging with what's happening out there as well as uh, reporting on how effective we're being with our social tools. So um, when it comes to uh, social uh, media marketing, this is a big step for, uh, for inbound marketing as well, because uh, we want to be able to drive people to the website uh, without paying for it. One of the things that I come across a lot with, uh, with customers that I work with is that they might have a social, um, social, um, strategy that's kind of uh, sporadic where they are not uh, there's no kind of long-term goals with the the social um, uh, campaigns so HubSpot allows you to map out your social uh, postings over a month or a quarter um, so that they are coherent so that they are uh, so they make sense in a context of a of a longer term education for your for your customers um, once we've set that up we can see exactly what's working what's not working and then HubSpot will also tag a lead that comes from uh, social media uh, so that you'll be able to track the amount of revenue that you're making uh, from those efforts as well. When we talk about segmentation, like in a, co a post COVID world, segmentation is gonna be incredibly important, especially for those companies that have really big databases. Um, 
with uh, some of the customers that we work with, if you've got 100,000 contacts in your database or 200,000, um, the, the days of, um, of, of uh, segmenta segmentating, segmenting um, those lists uh, by hand or by only a few different aspects uh, is not going to be very effective. With HubSpot, uh, we've got something called active lists. Active lists allow you to have a segmentation that is constantly being updated in the background. So in, uh, in this case, it would be they've filled out a form and they've, uh, they've attended this webinar. But this form, like this, uh, this list might be of everyone who's filled out a form in the last 30 days. So by giving that kind of, setting up that, um, that aspect, this list will be constantly updating all the time. And then HubSpot will be sending these, um, these lists a, a different kind of, a different updated uh, email nurturing campaign um, based on that, based on whatever month that they're doing it in. So let's take an example. If this is a, a segmentation of the, everyone who's come to the website and filled out a call uh, or get a call from sales, uh, we can send a nurturing campaign to those guys based on all of our product offerings uh, just for the month of August, for example, um, and then have the same thing set up for September, et cetera. The idea behind uh, seg segmenting your database is that we're trying to squeeze the, the, the most value out of that by uh, delivering really, um, really personalized content uh, to those people that are coming to their website. Predictive lead scoring. This is something that is in uh, marketing, marketing hub uh, enterprise. We also have lead scoring within the other packages as well. Um, lead scoring can be a very, uh, a very good way to, to manage your lead database in a, in a post COVID world where people are doing a lot of uh, research on your website. So we might say that if somebody looks at a pricing page, they get plus 10 points. If they, um, open an email that we send them from our sales team, they get an extra six points or whatever. Once that, uh, that lead score goes over a certain amount, we can rotate that to uh, sales directly and they'll be able to follow up um, based on that lead score. And um, a lot of our customers over the last six months have really got into this um, as their uh, marketing sales SLA driver um, because it can be very effective. When it comes to predictive lead scoring with uh, marketing enterprise, we do get a little bit more into um, into kind of the machine learning end of HubSpot, um, but we can do this with a very, very simple um, uh, business case as well. When it comes to automation, HubSpot uh, marketing really stands out here. We can basically set up a email nurturing campaign based on anything that we wish, but we can also uh, have this react to the type of uh, behavior that uh, our prospects are displaying. So we can say, put have a, a goal in mind for our marketing automation. So you might run an email campaign based on the, the goal of getting them to sign up for a webinar, for example. Once they've actually signed up for that webinar and filled out a form, HubSpot would, can recognize that and pull them out of the automation automatically uh, so they don't get emails when they don't really, uh, they don't really need to see them. So with marketing automation and uh, email workflows, the really is endless the, the kind of possibilities that can have there and very, very useful when we're talking about reaching people um, based on their behavior rather than just based on the, the membership of a, a static list, for example. One of the other things that's kind of unavoidable these days if you're trying to scale up is the, is the, the advertising. With HubSpot, you'll be able to actually add all the different um, uh, ad cap or ad, um, Call them ad accounts. So Google AdWords. We'll be talking about Facebook, um, Instagram, all that type of stuff will be uh, integrated in, within HubSpot. The reason why that's important to actually integrate them to HubSpot. One, from a ROI reporting point of view, we want to make sure that we are getting a good overview uh, of that in one number. Um, I know that if you have Google, if you've got Facebook, it's hard to actually get a, a good ROI because they're kind of tracking different things. With HubSpot, we'll be able to get that one ROI number for your advertising. You'll also be able to build your ads directly through HubSpot um, and, add, and uh, analyze them as well. This all keeps, keeps everyone on the same page as well as keeping the kind of the post-COVID uh, strategy on course. This is kind of the last thing I wanted to have a chat about when we're talking about um, the post-COVID marketing world. Um, depending on the type of business that you are uh, that you are going to be uh, that you're in, uh, account-based marketing might be really uh, interesting for you guys. HubSpot have 
a, a target accounts list that can be manipulated by uh, sales and marketing. So let's take the example that I was a salesperson and I wanted to make sure that uh, my marketing team are really focused on trying to win business from a certain list of uh, certain list of uh, potential um, potential customers. What I would do is on the company record, uh, I would mark them as a target account. HubSpot recognizes that, pulls them into the target accounts tab, and then we can build bespoke uh, advertising campaigns directed at these companies. So, say if we're doing LinkedIn ads, uh, we'll be able to target only the companies that our salespeople have already pre-qualified to say, these are a good fit for us. Um, we can also uh, track the amount of uh, deals that were generated from this type of, um, this type of strategy, as well as, um, as well as the outcomes. So how much, uh, how much revenue. So something to think about, like I said before, that is more of a, a strategy rather than a, a feature. So after this, if you want to book some time with us and talk about, um, account-based marketing strategies, we can do that as well. Okay, so the handover to sales. I'm gonna drink here. This is another thing that is gonna be different when it comes to the post-COVID world. Let's think about it. If we think about how sales used to be, um, I remember when I was uh, in one of my first sales jobs, um, our, our manager would come around with a printout of all the different uh, leads for the day that had converted overnight or that they bought uh, from somebody and they would they'd hand them out on pieces of paper and we would just uh, we would just call them like that. So that was a very uh, old school way of handing over uh, sales leads. But with, with HubSpot, we really do want our sales and marketing team to be working in a very integrated way. Um, so let's have a quick chat about how uh, HubSpot handles this and how uh, we should set up an automation even if we're not using HubSpot, we should set up some sort of automation uh, communication between uh, the sales team and the marketing team. So we want to make sure that it doesn't matter if marketing is uh, sitting in their apartment in Dubai and the sales team is in Bangalore. We want to make sure that that, that the handoff is seamless and that it is system, systematized and uh, trackable. So I've got this quick video here. This guy, uh, Mark Roberge, uh, he was the first one, uh, first salesperson in HubSpot. He grew the, the company from $0 to $100 million, uh, in, I think, two years or something like that. Uh, but he's going to explain the sales process and the, and the inbound sales process that's necessary in a post-COVID world. Sandeep, are you hearing that? Sales process is basically... Uh, okay, perfect. Because <laughs> uh, I did a webinar the other day and no one could hear my videos. It was very embarrassing. Okay, cool. So we're all on the same page. Listen to Mark here and he's going to tell us about the sales process when it comes to uh, uh, inbound sales. Oh, no. He's gone. There he is. Okay, Sales process is basically uh, a sequence of stages that an opportunity goes through as it progresses from a lead to a customer. It essentially establishes a common terminology between business owners, between VPs of sales and managers and reps so that everybody understands where we are in a particular opportunity. The key to having a sales process is it gives you visibility into where we stand as we pursue the revenue targets for the month or the quota. Without having a well-defined sales process, you're essentially flying blind. You really don't know how you're doing until that month ends and you tally up where you stand. And what a sales process essentially does is it tells us whether or not we're behind or ahead. And if we are behind, it gives us visibility into where things are currently broken so that we can intervene with some strategies that are customized and personalized to that broken stage. You really want to do it right at the beginning. Me personally, I made the first you know, 500 dials at HubSpot and I was working on the sales process from day one. You want to have the sales process set up by the time you hire those first salespeople as a blueprint that they can actually follow and work with it. Inbound selling is really around transforming sales 
to align with the modern buyer. One of the key steps to transforming your sales team to be aligned with inbound sales is to build your sales process not by seller action, but base it on the buying journey and the steps that the buyer goes through when they purchase and evaluate your product. If you build a sales process on that, on how the salesperson can help them become aware of these problems opportunities, help them discover potential ways to solve them, help them evaluate the short list of solutions and help them purchase, you're going to achieve better alignment between your sales team and the buyer through every step of the process. The sales process. So the, what Mark's really digging into there is, the, is building a proper sales uh, process. With HubSpot, that becomes very easy because we'll be able to build a really custom one that's based on the, the buyer's journey that your, your company um, has developed with their customers. Um, I, it's always very surprising to me. Uh, I came from a call just before this uh, webinar with a company that's been around for about 50 years. Um, and they still don't have a, a proper sales process. They have about 30 salespeople that all do their own thing that uh, may or may not get deals in uh, by the end of the month or the quarter. There's absolutely no process in place. Um, and this makes it incredibly hard to manage. Um, it was hard to manage before COVID when everyone was in the same office, but now it's absolute mayhem. So what we're doing with that company is we're building a real structure through our CRM, uh, through Sales Hub, um, and that we're going to integrate that obviously with the, the marketing team um, so that everything runs very smoothly. It's going to be a huge transformation for these guys um, and hopefully um, it's going to work out uh, in a very profitable way. But they have no choice at this stage because of the, the COVID uh, shutdown where everyone is dispersed and they have to make a change. So what HubSpot uh, sales will do as well is uh, build automation. So we'll be able to automate uh, a lead rotation to a salesperson. We'll be able to set up a task in that salesperson's to-do list to follow up with the lead. Uh, we'll even be able to send uh, internal SMS to that uh, salesperson to say, um, you know what, you've got a new lead here. You please follow up within the next X amount of hours. If that lead doesn't get followed up on, we can rotate that to somebody else on the sales team to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. So a real robust system in there uh, for a, a sales team that isn't sitting in the same room they might be sitting all over the world at this stage. Sequences. So this is another step in the inbound sales uh, process as well. HubSpot allows you to set up a sequenced uh, sales process. So you might say every, let's take the example, every time a lead comes in, sales are going to enroll them in a sequence. The sequence might have three emails plus two tasks. So we might want to have a total of five touch points on that lead uh, from sales. The first one will be an email. Second one will be a task in their to-do list that is going to tell them, okay, uh, give this guy a call. He didn't get back to the email. Um, and then two days later, they'll get another email with a little bit updated information. HubSpot allows you to put in different uh, tokens in here. So it will have their name, then the name of their company, all that type of stuff. So the idea here is that we're gonna be able to standardize a sales process um, wherever the salespeople are sitting so that management can know exactly um, that every uh, lead that is in the, uh, in the process here is getting looked after and nothing is falling through the cracks. Selling with video as well, HubSpot, when you set up uh, with Sales Hub, it will allow you to actually produce a video um, through the interface and email that to somebody um, through an integration with Vidyard that you get when you get set up with uh, HubSpot automatically. Um, this will really give your the inbound sales guys the ability to put a, a face to the, the email that they're sending. Um, a lot of the time with the inability to actually go to people's offices, with the inability to have that one-on-one -on -one, um, relationship building, um, we, we are kind of losing uh, losing opportunities that we, we would have usually had. If somebody calls me uh, and they're in Dublin and it's a, a deal worth chasing for me, I can get in the car and I can drive to their office usually. Now I can't do that, but I'd like to have some sort of uh, interaction with those people so they can put a face to the, the name that they know it's not just a an email um, you know robot that's uh, reaching out to them. So selling with video, if you want to differentiate, differentiate yourself, uh, this is a great way to do so. Playbooks. Playbooks is another one that is about standardizing the sales process. So we can set up um, the like a script. We can set up a, a kind of a knowledge base for salespeople. So if they're selling to a certain industry or whatever, uh, we might need to have different um, have different information stored. So when we 
when we set up a, a playbook, uh, all of the information that we capture on the playbook uh, will be captured on the contact record. It's very important when we're, if we have a multi-stage uh, sales process, if there is a business development rep, for example, if they're doing a qualification call, there might have to be a standard amount of um, information that they need to actually send that to a, an account executive, for example, to take it to demo level. Um, with playbooks that allows us to do that and allows us to have a library of best practices uh, across the CRM. Predictive lead scoring, we've talked about that before. Deal management, this is exactly what we were talking about uh, with our, with our uh, sales leader, Mark Roberge, in the video. Um, with HubSpot, you'll be able to manage your deals in a very specific way to your business. Um, so you'll be able to uh, have completely different um, deal stages here uh, for even for different pipelines. So you might have a services pipeline versus a product pipeline that have different sales, uh, sales cycles. With HubSpot, you'll be able to manage that as well. One of the things that is often overlooked when it comes to, to CRM is the forecasting abilities of the, of the product as well. With HubSpot um, and with the, the post-COVID uh, world, keeping control of what's happening in your sales pipeline is going to be even harder because you can't walk up to your sales team uh, individually and say what they are shouting or what are, what, are they, um, what are they calling for the end of the month figures. So with HubSpot, we'll be able to have that, uh, have that reporting suite uh, ready to go for you guys so you can manage your sales team um, and also you can communicate directly with the marketing team about the leads that you guys are uh, that you guys are working so that was that that was kind of the overview of what i would suggest uh would be the tools that we would really dig into say if we were uh, working with your company to modernize your your marketing and sales processes um after the, the post covid uh, uh changes i wanted to at this stage, have a quick uh, have a quick look at our uh, demo um, interface here. We're just going to show you a few different items here, just to give you a, a taste of what the HubSpot interface looks like if you're not familiar. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of Q and A at the end, and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So we should be seeing the uh, we should be actually be seeing the interface right now. Um, Sandeep, give me a, give me a, uh, give me a, a little bit of feedback there. Can you see the, uh, the screen I'm working on? Hey, Sandeep. Yeah, I can see the screen. There's a quick demo for, uh, of demo, uh, HubSpot interface, but I okay. can't see the, uh, the actual demo. Okay. Give me two seconds here, guys. Uh, share screen. I'll jump into another screen. Okay, cool. So you guys are seeing this now. So as you can see, HubSpot has a suite of sales, service, and marketing all in the one platform. Um, the area that I'm in now uh, is the reporting uh, dashboards. Uh, with the dashboard, you'll be able to have dashboards for individuals, for teams, uh, for, in this case, uh, lead generation, where we're seeing all the different types of leads that are coming in, funnels, MQLs by source, all this information is going to be out of the box actually. So we've got a, we've got a report library that you can build your, your dashboards with uh, very easily. You can also have one for marketing versus sales um, or have blended reports based on cross object reporting as well. Um, this information can be shared through uh, regular email. Uh, so you can email this dashboard to people who maybe aren't in the, um, in the sales or marketing uh, teams, but want to have an overview of what's happening with the funnel. So you can rotate those on a weekly or monthly, quarterly basis, whatever, uh, to those decision makers, maybe directors of companies who want to keep an eye on what's happening. Um, when it comes to the sales dashboard, um, individual salespeople can have their own ones. So we can have goals set by productivity, how many calls we want our sales to uh, have, how many meetings, etc. Uh, we can also have leaderboards for sales teams. Anything that you can think of when it comes to uh, tracking what's happening with the, the sales activity, as well as uh, the actual deals close versus goal, all that type of stuff can be done uh, with HubSpot as well. With HubSpot as well, you can, you can dig into uh, stuff like quotas for monthly quotas or quarterly quotas or whatever, and you can stagger those quotas for different regions or different territories. Anything that you need, uh, you can do, there, do that as well. Um, when it comes to the contact record, so if I come up here to contacts, you'll see contacts and companies. So contacts are individuals and companies are companies, accounts, whatever. Um, 
this is the interface that you're actually going to be seeing. All of the emails that you send from Gmail or Outlook uh, will actually be stored here on the um, the activity uh, on the activity um, feed here. And um, so, if somebody leaves the sales organization, or if somebody else uh, gets this account rotated to them uh, through an automation, they'll know exactly what's happening with the account. They'll be able to see uh, stuff like deals, tickets open, anything about this account will be stored here. That's where the playbooks are as well. That's where they live. Very important feature. Um, all of this can be customized here as well. So we can say, okay, what's important for our salespeople to see? Um, you can uh, build all that stuff in there. Your meetings will be uh, integrated with, if you use uh, Zoom or whatever, I would be able to integrate that here as well. And the idea here is that every time that Morty comes to the website, uh, we're gonna be tracking what he's doing as well. The salespeople will be able to see exactly what pages they're looking at, as well as every kind of interaction that we've had in the past. So they get a real, really kind of a top level view of what uh, what's happening with this account. Um, they will be able to set up tasks, meetings, all that type of stuff. When it comes to deals, I wanted to kind of flesh this out a little bit as well. Um, so if we look at this, um, all of these, uh, the process here um, might be uh, completely different um, post COVID than you have currently uh, worked on before. So HubSpot gives you the flexibility to up upgrade these um, uh, these deal stages so they, they uh, suit your business. We can also build automations within the deal uh, flow here. So uh, if a contract is sent, we might need to alert somebody in our organization that the, there's a, a new deal coming down the line. Uh, if it's a, like a consulting deal, for example, we might have to organize resources based on that. We can trigger workflows uh, if the deal has been moved into that uh, that part of the um, uh, sales process, okay. Um, so the idea here is that we want to make sure that our salespeople are empowered to to run their own uh, sales operation, but we also want to make sure that we uh, give them the ability to update everything properly as things move through the sales uh, function. Um, so that was the a little bit of a. Uh, a quick view of the interface here. Um, a few things that I wanted to show you. Um, if you guys want to actually have a demonstration for your company, we can talk about that afterwards um, and we can book that in, but it would be kind of a little bit more bespoke for your business. So I won't go into a full blown, um, a full blown uh, demonstration there uh, right now. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end of that part. There was one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is, mm -hmm. so, Okay, so does anybody have any questions before we move on of anything that I've talked about? I actually can't see the question, thanks. Okay, yeah, stick I, to uh, I have a couple of questions uh, for you. Yeah. So the question number one over here, uh, like we are working in the, uh, in the market and sometimes customer comes with their challenges. Uh, they're saying HubSpot is a free CRM tool. And uh, when they get into this, there's some of the areas. So how uh, we make differentiation between free CRM and the page, because obviously if you're running the company, so there has to be some dollars coming in. So how yeah. you can differentiate, what are the possibilities are available in the free CRM? and what is the possibilities are available in the paid one? It's a great question. So the biggest difference, this is how I like to think about the free CRM. The free CRM was developed because HubSpot needed a, uh, a data depository for all of the information that we were generating in our marketing tool. So the CRM started, uh, started as, a, as a free CRM because it's necessary uh, to capture that information. You have to have somewhere to put all this marketing stuff that we're generating all from the inbound uh, marketing strategies. So the, th the way to think about the free CRM is that it is a, a place where companies uh, have the ability to organize their contacts and, uh, and accounts uh, in one central place. Um, it, it is very light when it comes to features, um, but it does give you the ability to actually store all that information um, about a company, about a contact uh, in, in one place. There are some, uh, also, if you're a company that doesn't have a very uh, complex structure, if you're a, you know, a five person company, 10 person company, um, there might be enough in that, um, the free version for your company to get started with HubSpot. Um, generally speaking, if we can get people to use the free CRM, 
there is a lot of upgrades that go on there um, because of the lack of uh, functionality. Like I said, it, it is a company we're trying to generate uh, revenue as well. Um, but again, it can be a, a good fit uh, from a, a organization point of view. If you just want a place to dump your, your contacts, your companies and manage uh, some deals in a very uh, static way. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, as in, in conclusion, uh, it's, it, uh, it is unlikely that uh, marketing and sales landscape will go back to the old ways of doing things. At the beginning of this uh, webinar, we talked about how um, <laughs> we talked about how uh, you know we did a poll earlier on saying that you know do people think that it's going to go back to the way things were? And people, uh, you know, there's a hundred percent thing for no. What I think. I think there's probably going to be a blended approach once once things get back to somewhat normal. I think that there'll be a lot of companies that are working remote for sure, but there's also going to be a lot of companies that have like flexi time, um, which well, you know people will be coming in two or three days a week um, at kind of random days. It does make it a little bit harder for us uh, to kind of pin down people that we're trying to sell our products and services to. So there's going to be there's going to be a, a necessary upgrade in the way that we're thinking about our marketing and our sales approach. Um, having the right strategy uh, and tools in place uh, will help you beat the competition and win more customers. I, I really think that if we're doing investments in our sales and marketing funnel now, while everybody else is, is in panic mode, I think that's that's a way to really uh, get ahead of our competition and make sure that we are, are actually marketing to our customer potential customers better and that we're handling leads in a more efficient way than our competition uh, when it comes to uh, rotating leads to salespeople and uh, having the salespeople take action. Um, inbound marketing and sales tactics uh, are the best for distributed uh, decision teams. Um, and they have to trust your brand. It's not going to be something that we can kind of go door to door anymore. Um, we have to make sure that we're uh, the decision makers that are not going to be talking to each other uh, all day, every day. Um, but understand your uh, your brand, maybe in different ways. For example, HubSpot uh, sells to sales teams, marketing teams, and services teams. So we need to tailor our own messaging to each one of those groups to make sure that they recognize HubSpot as a, a leader in the service industry, a leader in the marketing industry, as well as sales. Uh, so we don't fall into a box where, where we are uh, just seen as a marketing tool or just a service tool or just a sales tool. Um, I think one of our, uh, the biggest conclusions that we can come out of this as well is that uh, having uh, collaboration or working with uh, partners to deliver, uh, deliver services for us personally is going to be uh, a big deal moving forward as well. And that's why we're working with companies like Bram so we can have that localized approach to, to building these, uh, these sales and marketing systems. So that's the, the conclusion of the webinar. Um, the only thing that I would uh, tell you guys as well is that everybody who applied for this webinar or anyone who uh, uh, who watched it uh, will be able to uh, avail of a two-week managed trial uh, for all the attendees. So a managed trial is a little bit different than a trial. Uh, it means that we'll sit down, we'll talk about the, the problems that you guys are having with your, uh, with your sales and marketing approach or any upgrades that you need to or want to make. Uh, and we'll try to tailor that a little bit um, in the trial environment so you guys can really see uh, kind of before you go any further, you can see what it would look like for your business. We have a, a new upgraded IP for, um, for our trial environment as well. So you'll actually be able to sell it, send out live emails and workflows um, as well as um, capture leads you know, on HubSpot forms on your website, all that type of stuff. So it will be a, a fully fledged trial. Uh, for two weeks. If you want to have a chat about that, uh, you can follow up with me or uh, Sandeep. Anybody have any questions before we end today? I think chat Mr. Vishwanaik uh, maybe would like to. Yeah, yeah, I'm just having a look there. Sure. Thanks for having there. It was an interesting session. Let me touch. Okay, cool. Um, so I think, uh, Graham, or, yeah. Okay, perfect. So if anybody has any questions, uh, you can follow up with us anyway. Um, I've got this recorded, so I'm going to send this out to everybody who attended as well as uh, the few other hundred people who <laughs> who signed up for the, the webinar but couldn't make it on the day. Um, if you have any questions, again, let us know. If you want to uh, set up a meeting when it comes to the, the managed trial environment, um, we can do that as well. So thanks very much, everybody, for, uh, for joining us today, and we'll be in touch, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
Good luck, everybody.